Okay, so covalent nomenclature, the reason why it's important is naming your substances, even if the substances are very similar, even one atom of a difference between um, your different compounds can lead to very like two different, very, very two, um, two very different substances. So for example, here we have CO and CO2. So one of them is something that's around us all the time, right? CO2 or carbon dioxide, we literally breathe it out. Um, and even if we inhale it, we, we're fine. But if you just literally take one atom of a difference and have CO, or it's known as carbon monoxide instead, it's very poisonous to you, right? So that's why people have carbon monoxide detectors in their home. Um, because carbon monoxide, it's like tasteless, invisible, odorless, uh, but it's toxic to most animals, including us. So even a one atom difference can lead to two very different substances. Now, when we're naming substances, we learned last time how to name ionic substances or substances with ionic bonds. And remember, those are made up generally of metals and non-metals. And then today we're going to be talking about naming covalent compounds, so just nonmetals. And then metallic bonds, you know, there's not really a naming system for them. Um, it's just whatever the metal is, you just call it that metal. Or if it's an alloy, it usually has like its own name, right? So metallic bonds, you don't have to worry about. We're only going to talk about covalent and ionic bonds. And remember, a covalent bond is when your electrons are shared. And then ionic bonds are when your electrons are transferred or one is given away and one is taken. And basically remember that ionic bonds, um, because you're transferring or giving and taking away electrons, you're gonna create these charges, right? So you create ionic charges. Um, and remember the charges, have to balance out to zero. Whereas covalent bonds, there's no ionic charges that you need to worry about because there's no electrons that are completely given or taken away. They're just sharing the electrons. So that net charge for each atom won't change. All right, so this idea is gonna be kind of important for understanding why there's differences between the naming systems for these, uh, for ionic and covalent substances. So these are the rules for naming covalent compounds. Um, the first two rules are the same as ionic substances, but then you can see covalent substances have um, a few extra steps mainly this third step and then this fourth and fifth step are kind of for specific cases. Okay, so the first thing is you're just gonna write the element's name. And then the second thing is you're gonna write the second element's name, but instead you're gonna end it, it end uh, the substance in IDE. Okay, so the same thing that we did before, right? Like for this would be sodium chloride. Um, but covalent compounds have this third step where you need to add prefixes to determine how many of each atom or e I mean of each element you have. Um, so for example, like mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, et cetera. Uh, so like over here, we had covalent compounds. So this was carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. So you need to add these prefixes to tell you how many atoms you have of each element. Now, ionic substances don't need to use these prefixes because since they have charges and the charges have to cancel out or equal to zero, you can always determine how many atoms of an ionic substance you have. So for example, right, let's say I write just a random compound. So I write calcium, fluoride, right? There's no prefix here telling you how many of each calcium or how many of each fluorine you have. But because you know, since this is an ionic bond, right? Because it's a metal and a non-metal, you know that they have charges. So I know calcium is two plus and fluorine is minus one. 
So even if it doesn't tell you with prefixes how many of each calcium and fluorine you have, you automatically know, right? Because of the charges have to cancel out to zero, you have one calcium and two fluorines. But let's say I literally just said carbon oxide. So this would be a covalent compound. Um, because these don't have charges, you don't know how many of each carbon and how many of each oxygen you have. And since this is covalent, there's no ionic charges, so you can't balance out to zero or anything. Okay, so for covalent compounds, you add prefixes to tell, men to tell you how many of each atom you have. And then four and five are just more like a specific cases. So don't use mono on the first element. So for example, right, if you have CO2, this is carbon dioxide. So the di tells you that you have two oxygens. And then even though there's only one carbon here, you don't write like monocarbon. It's just carbon dioxide because carbon is our first element listed. And then if you have AO or OO, you're gonna turn it just into an O. So I'll show you guys what that looks like a little bit later on. Okay, so those are the steps. So let's go over a couple of these. So N2O3, so I'm just gonna write nitrogen. So that's the, my first element. And then I'll write oxide because that's my second element. And remember your second element, you're gonna end it in IDE. And then you just put in the prefix. So this would be dinitrogen and then trioxide. And then you're done. So pretty simple, right? You just use these prefixes. Um, next compound. So here you have carbon and fluorine. So this would be fluoride. Okay, and then you have one of each, so you put mono in the front. So monocarbon, monofluoride. But remember, for the first element, if you have mono, you don't use it. So you would cross this out. So you would just have carbon monofluoride. And again, if you get confused by like, do I include a mono in the front or I don't, or you don't, um, just think of carbon dioxide, right? That's like a real life example that you should know. It's not monocarbon dioxide, it's just carbon dioxide. Okay, um, next example here, you have phosphorus and oxygen. So you have oxide. So you have two phosphorus, so that would be diphosphorus. And then you have five oxygens. So you have pentaoxide. Now this is where it gets a little bit, not confusing, but there's like a special rule for this. So if you notice, right, here you have A and O next to each other, right? So it says if you have AO or OO next to each other, just turn it into a single O. So instead of saying pentaoxide, because it sounds kind of like awkward because you have these two similar sounding vowels next to each other. To make it smoother, um, you're just gonna say pentoxide. So you don't include that extra A. So instead you would have diphosphorus pentoxide. It makes it like a smoother transition. So instead of pentaoxide, it's pentoxide. And this rule happens a lot. for oxide, um, especially because like oxide starts with an O. So like instead of monoxide, right? You would have monoxide or instead of like nona oxide, instead you would have nanoxide or you could see the example we did here, right? Instead of pentaoxide, you would have pentoxide. So if you have an oxide, um, just be careful to make sure that you change that AO or OO um, into just one O to make it sound kind of smoother. Okay, and then last one. So here we have potassium and then we have chloride. 
And then here you're actually just done. So if you notice, right, potassium is a metal and chlorine is a non-metal. So this would make it an ionic bond. So remember your ionic bonds, you only do the first two steps or you do the steps that we listed from last lesson. Okay, all these here, these were all covalent bonds. So they were only non-metals. So that's why you have to do the prefix step uh, or prefix step. But then here, since it's an ionic bond, you just do the first two steps or just look back at your notes from last time. You literally just write the name of the metal and then the non-metal you ended in IDE. Okay, so again, the rules are pretty simple, but it's just like you need to make sure and double check um, whether it's ionic or covalent. And then if you're like for me, since I've been doing this for so long, if I see an ionic uh, substance, I like automatically know what are metals and non-metals. But if you're not sure, again, just look at your periodic table and you'll be able to tell, right? Anything to the left of the metalloids is a metal. Anything to the right of these green metalloids is a non-metal, except hydrogen. Hydrogen is a non-metal as well. Okay, why don't you guys try the next four on your own? So here we would have chlorine oxide. And again, so you would have dichlorine, hepta oxide, or actually you would have heptoxide because you have that A and O next to each other. So dichlorine heptoxide. Um, over here you have carbon, and oxide. So again, you would include a mono for the next one. And then here you don't include a mono. Um, and then again, you take out that extra O. So instead you would have carbon monoxide. Okay. And then here you just need to be careful, right? So you have calcium. fluoride, and then you're actually finished um, because this is ionic bond. So you would just have calcium fluoride. You don't need any of the prefixes. These ones all are covalent. So just be careful on that. Um, and then here, this is easier, right? Cause you're kind of going in reverse. So you just have P4 and then O9. So tetraphosphorus monoxide. Okay. Um, okay, so moving on, um, that's pretty much it for naming. And then here we're going to, I'm going to just talk about really quick, the difference between elements, compounds, and molecules or atoms, compounds, and molecules. So atoms or elements, right? Um, those are just found on the periodic table. So obviously you have, right? Atom slash elements. So you have elements listed on the periodic table and these are all made up of one atom each in most cases, right? So you have like lithium, beryllium, silicon, neon, krypton, phosphorus, et cetera. So this is kind of hard to see, but just if you have one atom, you just have one atom of that element. Okay, um, the next, like I guess word you could have is called a molecule. So a molecule, whoops. A molecule is when you have two or more atoms joined chemically together, right? So these atoms can either be the same element or different elements. So for example, here you have an example of a molecule. Um, so you can have like O2, H2, H2O, BACL, etc. So these are, you just have more than one atom. Now a compound is a special type of molecule. So a compound, and this is where people get confused, they interchange these two words, um, but a compound is a substance 
made up of two or more atoms of different elements. Okay, uh, so all compounds are molecules, but not all molecules are compounds. So what that means, right, is here you have compounds. So like H2O, BACL, N2O3, CO. You can see these are all made up of more than two or one or more, more than one atom. And they're all made up of different elements, right? So none of the elements repeat or not that they don't repeat, but you have different types of elements listed. Um, here you have a molecule that's a non-compound because even though you have more than one atom, you only have one element or one type of atom listed, right? So oxygen is just O2. Even though there's two of the oxygens, um, it's just, it's not a compound. So I kind of think about this as like, think about like a compound word, right? A compound word is two different words combined together. Um, so like bookcase, um, stair step if that makes sense. So um, it has to be different elements for a compound. Okay, so all compounds are molecules because they're made up of more than one atom, um, but not all molecules are compounds because you have some molecules that only have one type of element. So based on that, I know that's like a little bit confusing, but I'm gonna leave this chart up here. Why don't you guys try, uh, this last question. Okay, so pretty straightforward, right? Um, here you have carbon, so that's just one atom or element. So it can't be a molecule or compound. Um, and then here you have HCN. So obviously you have more than one atom, so it's a molecule. Um, but you also have more than one type of element, right? You have hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen. So this would be a compound. And then here, um, you don't have more than one type of element, but you have more than one atom. So this would be a molecule. And it's not a compound, again, because it only has like that one type. You only have hydrogens here. You don't have multiple different elements. Okay. Um, and that is pretty much it for this lecture.